everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another Tyler Perry Sisters Review. This is the end credit trailer for episode seven entitled Ordinary Pain. And the synopsis is, after catching Zach off guard, Fatima questions the status of her relationship with him. Sabrina devises a strategy to remove Q once and for all. That sounds a little bit like death, don't it? But we're going to see what Sabrina, because <laughs> y'all know Sabrina ain't the brightest crayon in the box. So I'm not sure what this plan is that she's deriving. <laughs> but um, if this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning family member, you already know what it is and what it always will be. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff if you choose to. If not, just sit back, relax, and we're going to get right into this messy, messy thing. Now... Zach is explaining to Fatima that Karen only kissed him on the cheek. And I said, oh, how? Oh, how the tables have turned. Because the last time Karen kissed your ass on the cheek, it went a little something like this. You remember this, Zach? Because it went a little something like this. What, Zach? Shit. She did this shit on purpose. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. She did this shit on purpose so that she can get somebody to send you a picture. So now, now you're in the business of defending Karen. Is that what we doing, Zach? You're defending her now? Yeah, that seems like that's what you're doing. And all of this proves to me that Zach knew the entire time that Karen never set him up. But because he was still basking in his emotions, he felt justified by placing blame on her. Because I'm like, it was just, what, three, four days ago that this picture was taken of Karen kissing him on the cheek and all of that and how he was so defensive and, oh, she doing this on purpose and, oh, she trying to ruin our relationship and, oh, she trying, she trying, she trying. And now, because your feelings are being worn on your sleeve, now you're defending her. I mean, you know she just, she only kissed me on the cheek, right? Uh-huh. I said, Fatima. Wake up and smell the folger, sis. Wake up and smell the damn folger. <laughs> Wake up and smell the folger, sonny. And so um, Zach asked her, he asked Fatima about her ring because she's not wearing it. And it appears that Fatima doesn't say anything. And I'm just going to say it's the way that this particular scene has been edited for this um, preview. Because as of right now, I, I'm just done with this whole damn silent treatment. Like, Fatima, you showed up to the salon because you knew Zach was there. You had a manila folder in your hand. You got out your car. You went up to talk to him, and you're not saying anything. I'm just, I'm not here for it. Like, let's act like two adults. Tell Zach how you feel, why you feel the way that you feel, and have a discussion. Like, this whole silent treatment thing, like, you don't want to talk to him. You left the house without talking to him, but then you show up to where he's going to be. Like, that's a bit much. I don't even care what's in that manila fold. I don't care if it's about his son. I don't care what it's about. You had ample time to talk to him, and you chose not to. Now it's of extreme importance you to give him what's in this envelope. I'm not buying it. I'm just not. And maybe she does. Maybe Fatima does talk, but I have not seen, as of now, as me recording this, I have not seen the trailer, the extended trailer breakdown. So I don't know if she actually said something or not. But as of right now, I haven't seen it. We see Sabrina on the phone with Danny and she's crying and she's telling Danny that the lawyer um, talked about the possibility of her getting 15 years. And I feel so bad for Sabrina. Like, I do believe there were moments in time where Sabrina definitely should have called the cops when Q popped up at the bank after he had robbed it. You know what I'm saying? I think as a as a manager, she definitely dropped the ball. But I just feel bad about her, you know, being faced with that amount of years. And the interesting thing is, the wild thing is, and it just goes to show, you know, our justice system, but it also goes to show how people definitely should be careful about the things that they say. Because Q is not a viable witness the way that the lawyer explained he has a record, you know, he got this job in a sense to make him look like a better person. But at the end of the day, he's still him. But the only incriminating thing they have is Maurice admitting that him and Sabrina were involved in on the bank robbery. 
And in my mind, like, I understand the way that Tyler developed it. But it's, like, for Maurice to even say that, like, it's just... I mean, to me, it definitely fits with his character. Like, I, I don't feel like it was a stretch for Maurice to say that. But he just plays so much, and he plays all the time. And this time, his horrible, horrible humor have come to not only bite him in the ass, but Sabrina as well. Fatima sees Tamara at the law firm, and Fatima makes note of the wedding ring. And she was like, what is that? And she was like, oh, we married. <laughs> Tamara was like, I, I was married now. Baby, Tamara said, damn what y'all got to say. I am Mrs. Hayden, all right? And so um, Fatima was like, I told you to get him, but not like that. I said, girl, Tamara is a gold digger. What part of gold digger do you not understand? She is a gold digger who is actively functioning in her role, and you can't control her. And I think that for me, this was one of those situations where Fatima had cooked up this plan. You think you have a puppet to do exactly what you say, when you say, and how you say, but people are people. And Tamara had her own idea of what she wanted to do. She told Fatima what she wanted to do, and she executed that plan to the absolute T, okay? She said, I'm going to take him for everything he got. And now she's his wife. So she is, Tamara is playing chess. You got people trying to play her like she a damn connect four type of chick. Not even checkers. Connect four is, 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 is worse than checkers. Like on the scale of tier of games. They tried to treat Tamara like she was a check four type of chick. And Tamara said, I got to let you know. No, I'm playing chess. And Fatima, you can't control me. You can't control my moves. You can't control what I do. You can't control what I think. And hopefully this is a wake-up call because I think Fatima got that whole thing of I'm doing this, I'm running this. No, sis, you're not. You're not. And Tamara proved that she isn't. And I know people be like, you know, Tamara better watch out because Fatima might call Madam. Fatima grown. Fatima handle your own affairs. What you need to, you need to call Madam for Tamara? Are you kidding me? Please. Then we see Aaron, Lord Aaron. <laughs> Lord, my baby is going down in the pits. I'm not exactly sure where he is talking to Pam. It looked like it could be maybe a restaurant in the uh, plaza, maybe. And um, he's asking her, like, what is really going on with Karen and Zach? And what is this hold that he has over her? And I said, Aaron, I like you. I really like you, bruh. But I'm not really liking the way that Tyler is uh, presenting his character to us. And I've said this, the con about Aaron is like he doesn't get the hint. And for those who listened to the um, My Sister's Keeper uh, live last night, me and Erica, like, we just didn't see eye to eye on this particular <laughs> on this particular topic when it came. But I love the discussion because she was able to present her points and I was able to present mine. I am a straightforward individual. If I tell somebody to leave me alone, damn it, I mean for you to leave me the hell alone. That don't mean call me in 30 minutes. It don't mean ask me the question again two days from now when you think I've calmed down. If I say leave me alone, it means leave me alone. If I say I don't want to do this with you anymore, I don't want to do this with you anymore. Now, on the other hand, if somebody tells me, you know, Alicia, um, we've gotten to a point where I feel like you and I should distance ourselves. I don't really want to be in this situation with you any longer. It's not serving me. This is what you get from me. Are you sure? He's going to say, I'm sure. Okay. Are you positive? And if he says, yes, I'm positive. And I'm going to ask you one last time. Are you sure you po you're positive? And if he says yes to that, I'm done. I'm not in the, I'm not in the business of begging and I don't want a man to beg. I don't want to keep sweat. I don't want you to beg me. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you. I don't, I don't like that. That's, that's just me. So with Aaron pressing Pam about what is this hold that Zach has over Karen, the reality is Karen is still in love with this man. She never got over him. She, I, do I believe she was in the process of it? I absolutely do. But the moment I believe that the character of Karen is making strides 
to truly rid herself of the whole Zach of it all, Tyler Perry writes something to bring her ass right back to that place of where she's operating in this falsehood of hope that her and Zach are going to, you know, rekindle or get back together. I personally don't like it, but I also don't like the way we're seeing Aaron kind of unravel a bit in a sense. Because my thing is, what if Pam is able to specifically tell him, oh, this is the hold that Zach has on Karen. What is it going to do for you? It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't make him look better in the situation. You cannot love somebody out of love with somebody else. It don't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. And what I can say, even though I do enjoy the messiness of it all because it, it creates wonderful dialogue and com conversation and, and discussion, the thing with Aaron is I feel like Aaron is the is the person who gives and gives and gives and gives. And the moment he found somebody who looked like she was, she gave an inkling. <clears throat> because if we be honest, Karen, was really, she's never given her all to Aaron. So it's like the little bit that she did give, he fell in love with that. So it really makes me, and this may be for another video, but it makes me believe that Aaron really has not experienced true love before yeah he was married for 15 years but it's like did you really experience the type of love that you've been craving and did Karen give you a glimpse that she could be that person to give you that but I just don't like how my boy moving like let Karen miss you go find somebody else for you know find somebody else let her see the void or let her see what's missing when you're not there I, I really do want to see that. I don't want to see Aaron continue to put himself out there like that. Karen needs to heal. And she's not healed. She's not whole in the sense of because she's still holding on to the possibility. And as long as someone, in my opinion, is still holding on to the possibility of being with someone else, you're never going to get a fair chance. You're never going to have a fair opportunity to really be in a relationship with Karen, or you're going to be in a situation like Zach and Fatima where you rushed everything, you're now engaged, and now you got to deal with the fact that, oh, my man is still in love with his ex. Don't nobody want to deal with that. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I didn't mean to go off on that tangent because the more I was talking about it, the more I'm like, I should probably do another video about this because it's real. You know, it's real. I really do want to see these people happy. And, and sometimes happiness does look messy in the beginning. I get that. But I just don't like to see this type of, um, how can I put it? I don't like to see Aaron in this light because it's coming almost like, are you becoming obsessed with the fact that you have to have this person? And I don't want it to turn into that. But I'm, I'm going to stop it right here because I can go on and on. Then we see Danny's ass. First of all, why? Is Q in this wheelchair. You got shot in the shoulder, my dude. I could see if he was wearing an arm cast. A wheelchair? Get the hell out of here, Tyler. So Danny was like, she didn't give a damn and she pushed him in the wheelchair. What, what is he in there for? He got shot in the damn shoulder. But I'm going to leave it alone because I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Tyler Perry is not going to get my blood pressure up on this good Thursday. But um, thank you guys for listening. And until next time, when they drop dicks in the trailer, I would do the trailer breakdown for that. But um, until next time, you guys be safe out there, and I will holler at you later.